Paul, thank you for your song this morning. Uh, you're right, it was very appropriate. Really glad to have all of you here, but we're very grateful to uh, celebrate this morning's worship with uh, Eddie and his wife, Diane. Um, sadly, both of them have lost parents this summer, um, and Eddie more this week. Uh, both of them have lost mom. So we uh, will be praying with them, and I understand that you're going to try to join us on Zoom. And I look forward to that. Uh, I'll be in Arkansas. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in Cooper up there, but um, uh, I've been promised to do some uh, hiking and so forth, so we'll see. Dale, you want to go hiking with me? <laughs> Probably not. Listen, uh, if we continue our series of casting your burden upon the Lord and rest in Him, uh, I want to focus this morning in Psalm uh, 121, uh, more specifically in verse 8. Uh, but, but in order to keep the continuity of understanding of what we have been learning, I want to review some truths with you this morning from uh, previous sermons first. So Paul, if you'll help us with that, please. When we obey God's laws and commandments, then God will bless us and take care of us and Turn any harm onto our enemies. And that's a promise from God, can't he? Go ahead. Every Christian must live in honor of God. Try to understand other people, please. To love them. Try to do that through Jesus' eyes. Go ahead. All of us in Christ Jesus have a hope that is both real and true. Therefore, we can absolutely rejoice in the security of our salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Yes, there's going to be plenty of challenges. It's called life. And to it, life is a fair. But our hope is not in this world and in this chaos that Satan has brought upon us even today. All who are in Christ Jesus, we win. We're going to be raised through life eternal for all of time where there will be the greatest joy and the greatest hope forever, forever. Christians are getting out of this world in a marvelous and a wonderful way. As a Christian, Jesus is always our advocate before the Father. He is going to walk beside us every day. And he is going to love us and take care of us every day. When we live in Christ Jesus and when we abide in Christ Jesus, John 15 tells us that he is going to make us bountiful and produce good fruit through us. And when, but when we are apart from him, John 15 tells us that there's going to be consequences, especially for those who never accept him. Our burden is life because we live empowered by the Holy Spirit, walking by faith in a righteous pattern of lifestyle, which results in God's blessings and God's rewards to us. God is always in charge. Please know that. That means that God will always accomplish His plan for us, regardless of whatever else is going on. And that's a promise that you can absolutely count on, for sure. God is our hiding place and a place of safe refuge in the storms of life. And, and all those who trust God and seek our God can know that He is with them and He will rescue them as long as they abide in Him. He doesn't have to spend time correcting. When we obey God and we follow Him, then that is when God shows up and He blesses us and rewards us. And it's when He can unfold His plans of good for us because we are in obedience to Him. God has a plan. He has a timetable. And God absolutely has a purpose that He will reveal to us as our character and spirit become mature enough for Him to use us. You must unleash the power of God through your prayers. He will listen and he'll quickly respond to his obedient child who is living according to his will. Yet God had, always has a plan for each one of us. Remain Christian strong, church family. Don't be weak in your faith. Be strong. Don't be weak in your desire to pray for America and Christian leaders. Make that please a part of your daily routine. Then it will be a practice from now on. Be faithful to God, and He'll be faithful to you, I promise. 
then never give up. Never, never stop trying to be all that God intended for you to be. And you'll never know that unless you keep praying frequently and reading your Bible to understand and hear God's voice and purpose for your life. And then uh, today our sermon is, is to understand that God has been protecting his beloved children all along. And he will continue to protect us as his children. And although we live in a terrifying world, God is in control. And he is always in control. And if you'll join us, I think it's our last one, right? Paul? Yeah. If you'll join us, please, at, at uh, Psalm 121 now, please. It's just eight short verses, so I'm going to read those. And I think all of you have your Bibles open. And it says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From which shall come my help? That's a question. It's not a statement. May help, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He, will, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil and he will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your coming, going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. Now these are great truths that David has shared with us. That God is always with us and he's always watching over us. And, and before I, I'm going to talk about these verses, but before I do, if you would just glance back over to the short verses of Psalm 120. That also reminds you that when you're in trouble, you can cry out to the Lord and God will hear you. Because God is, is ever vigilant over us. God is ever vigilant over us as we journey through our life. He's watching over us. Uh, quite, quite honestly, I hope when you leave here today, you're going to understand that God is even interested in the minute details of your life. He wants to be involved in every area of your life and to keep you and to watch over you. Amen? Yeah. All right. With that being said, I want to expound a little bit on Psalm 121, and then I'm going to take us on a quick journey through the Bible. Now, these first two verses of Psalm 121, David asked the important question, should I look to the creation to protect and help me? Or should I look to the creator who made that creation for help? Church family, should we ever expect Satan, who is a created being that stirs up chaos and destruction, would Satan bring us peace and help? Or should we seek out the creator of all, who is the one true God to be our protector and our shield. Really, those are, are, are common sense questions that David is reflecting back to us that even today we need to think through. Then in verses uh, 3 through 5, uh, you have, you, if you have ever been on a trail, Sandy, and you've ever slipped or, or fallen while you were on that trail, uh, you know what it means to, to mess up a person perfectly good kneecap or to straight down your shin on a rock edge. In verse 5 there, the word defender is a Hebrew word shamar. And, and really the word, the, the, same, the same word in protector in, in verse 6 is a similar word of shamar. And it means to watch over, to preserve and to protect and to I love this. To reserve for oneself. God is our Shemar who reserves us and, 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 and he takes care of us and he watches over us and he shelters us securely. So that in verses 6 and 7 says that he protects us day and night to preserve our lives from all evil. Because he has reserved us for himself. And then in verse 8, God watches over us and preserves us as we come and go in our lives. And he is always on guard, watching and preserving our lives as his children. Because he has reserved us for himself. 
Shamar. That thrills my soul, Mr. Eddie. That thrills my soul that, that encourages me to know that even though Satan is going to bring troubles all around me, Kathy, God is there to preserve us. God is watching over us, and he is our shield and our defender and our protector. Now, if you've not been listening to, to me on Zoom or sermons of this other similar sermons, please don't hear what I'm not saying. Will Christians die? Yes. Will Christians have car wrecks? Yes. Will Christians get COVID? Yes. Or some other malady? Yes. yes, yes. Sometimes we cause those situations. Sometimes we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. And sometimes it's just called life to end and it, life isn't yes. always fair. Yet in all of our struggles, in all of our situations, God is watching over his children. And there's, I, there's several stories that I wanted to share with you this morning. And I, I, resisted, I resisted putting them in the sermon uh, because I want to talk to you about the truth of the Bible this morning and not my story. So I will share stories. I'm sure all of you have stories about the faithfulness of God, about how God has protected you and shielded you. And when you were in this situation, God pulled you out of that uncertain situation. So another time we'll talk about stories, because uh, I had a doozy for you today. But how delighted God is in the hope and the understanding of his children that he is in constant watch over us, that he is constantly watching over us. So let me recount some of the circumstances of the Bible for us this morning as I remind us of some of the heroes of the Bible to remind us that God is always watching over us even when we don't think that's the right circumstances. So these are on auto uh, for me. Would you start, start over for me again just a second? Go backwards. Yeah. Um, so these are on auto, uh, Paul. So let's go. Even though Adam and Eve failed at God in the garden, he provided them clothes and food and knowledge uh, of how to work, uh, work the land. And God blessed Adam and Eve's offspring and gave a really a population explosion to the earth and the wisdom that it took to subdue the earth. Then as Noah and his family worked day after day after day on this enormous boat, while people mocked them and made fun of them, yet God preserved them and the future of, of all mankind on that ship, along with all the animal life that also survived. When God called Abraham to, to become the father of the Jews, he faced huge decisions, including how to leave his ancestral home and follow the direction that God gave him. And there were so many circumstances that he faced. Lot and his family being kidnapped, and Lot choosing Sodom and Gomorrah rather than the mountains. But since Abraham had no son, Abraham greatly worried over God's promise for him to have millions of, of descendants. Then even when Abraham lied twice about Sarah being his sister, God brought her back to him from Pharaoh and from sickness. God tested Abraham's faith with Isaac. So not only was Abraham the father of the Jews, but frankly, he was also the father of the Arabs. And God promised protection, even over Ishmael. Then about the same time was Job. And we all know the long ordeal of Job and his great suffering at the hands of Satan. But God protected him, and God blessed Job so that he was healed. Then when Isaac and his wife had twins, Jacob, who was being born first, when suddenly he withdrew his hand, instead of being born first, he was born second. And as a result, he had no birthright. But God caused him to have a birthright. And when the circumstances looked like he was going to be killed by his brother, God changed those circumstances to protect Jacob. Then when Jacob's son Joseph thrown into a pit and was going to be left by the brothers. Suddenly circumstances changed. 
Admittedly, they were not ideal circumstances, but though, but through God's plan, Joseph became second in charge of Egypt, the world power of the time, and he brought his father's family to the land of Goshen, where the Hebrews flourished in that environment. And even when it seemed that they would be killed, God sent Moses to bring them out of Egypt, and they lived 40 years in a very hospitable desert. Then he faced overwhelming enemies, but, but Moses and the people beat them almost every time. Only sin caused them to be defeated. Also on Wednesday nights, we've been reading a lot about David and the kings of Israel. In all the battles that David was in, God protected him and God shielded David from being found by, by Saul. Then we learned this past Wednesday that the last king of David's lineage was chained and carted off to Babylon. God gave him a long life, and his subsequent Babylonian king released uh, that king from captivity so that David's lineage could live on. Now, all of these stories of protection show that God was watching over his children. And these stories that I've read to you go on and they go on. Church family, Wanda, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And we dare not trust the pleasures of mankind, but we can hold and lean, and we can trust only in Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm about to get carried away here, Mr. Eddie. <laughs> Romans 8. Would you turn with me there, please? Romans 8. I want you to go to verse 31. These are some truths that are forever true about God. Romans 8, 31. That's uh, after Acts, Romans. If you get to 1st and 2nd Corinthians, go too far. So Acts and Romans. Let me go ahead and read. What then shall we say to these things? It's on the screen if you haven't gotten there. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over to us all, and how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who? will bring a change against God's elect. God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather who was raised, who was at the right hand, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine our nakedness, our peril, our sword, just as it is written, for your sakes we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. That comes out of Psalms. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that, listen, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Church family, we are called to, to be conformed to the image and the obedience of Christ Jesus our Lord. We are told over and over that God is our Shabbat. Our, our shield and our defender, who not only watches over our comings and goings, but he himself has, has actually reserved us for himself. And he's reserved our lives for his glory. So you can count on his presence with you. You can count on his help and protection. And you can count on him walking with you through the storms and the troubles of your life. And he'll do that every day. He'll do it today. He'll do it tomorrow. And he'll keep doing it forever. So please don't worry about the journey of life that you're on. Because God has reserved you for himself.
yourself, and he is watching over you. So you can count on that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you bow with me, please? Fathers, we come before you this morning. We do so with an understanding that, gracious God, you love us, and you bless us, and you watch over us, and you fill us with your magnificent self. Father, I'm, just, I'm so moved this morning that Eddie and Diane have come to join with us this morning in worship of you. Having, having lost their beloved mothers this summer, others have lost loved ones in the recent past. And that's hard. It's really hard. And Satan whispers in our ears and causes us to think crazy thoughts, angry thoughts even. But God, you're always with us. You're always walking with us. You're loving us. You're helping us. You're lifting us up because you have reserved us for yourself. All who have accepted Jesus as Savior. So I just thank you, Father, that it's all in your hands. That you know our comings and goings. That you're going to be with us every step of the way. So I want to pray for these who have lost loved ones. I want to pray for uh, Kim who's, who's sick at home. For those like Lorraine who are concerned about COVID and, and afraid to get out. But I'm so grateful that Dale and Dolores are here with us. God bless them. Bless this centurion. Bless his precious wife. Maybe there's others here this morning that are not feeling well. Joe is at home, not feeling well. God bless them and heal them because you love them and you have reserved them for yourself. Thank you in the most wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. 